Look within. Look within. Look within. And live your life. And live your life on the edge of two worlds. A reality where you find true understanding of who you are. Take the step into the unknown with Alexander McCaig and Jason Rigby as they explore the thinly veiled world of consciousness, spirit, and the human condition. Join them in embodying the oneness of all. Walk the cliff's edge between the seen and the unseen realities. Welcome to High Density Living. Hey guys, this is Jason Rigby. I've got somebody better than Alex today. So I hope he hears this <laughs> and he's going to, uh, he's going to laugh. We have someone that's uh, way more knowledgeable than Alex is. We have somebody that's uh, a lot better looking than Alex. Uh, so this is going to be, this will be an amazing show. We're going to get into health. We're going to get into some of the things that you can do during um, COVID-19. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Some of you may, may you may agree, you may disagree. Uh, that's fine. Um, we all have the right to do that as individuals, but I have Jerry and I'm going to try this, Jerry. Here we go. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do your last name, Jerry Nowoski. I pronounced it wrong. Oh, there it goes. I, I went, you are Polish though. Yes, I am. Yeah. You're yes. Polish. But, uh, how do you say your last name, Jerry? Uh, it's Nowaki. Nowaki. It's like Milwaukee, but yeah. Nowaki. I said Kawasaki <laughs> <laughs> earlier, but that, that was, uh, so, uh, Jerry, you, I just want people to understand you've been in the health industry for how many years now? Close to, uh, let's just say, uh, 45 or so. So 45, you, 45 more years and you're, um, so everybody knows you're, how old are you now? 70? Well, no, I just turned 70. Oh, you just turned 70. June oh, okay. First, yeah. I hear I'm trying to make you older every year. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So you just turned 70 yeah. and uh, amazing health besides some issues with some motorcycle accidents because you're evil Knievel. Right. <laughs> You've had two motorcycle accidents? No, I've had about five, actually. Five? Yeah. Two big ones. Right. Two big ones. Yeah. Two big ones. And then... I don't know if there's ever really a smaller uh, or less life-threatening because if you hit your head or you get hit by a car going the other way. I, right. There's just so many unknowns, but two major and three smaller. So you you said that you had a Ducati bike, and I know people that have those. Yeah. Uh, we have a friend, uh, Pavel, that has one. Those bikes are basically, you're, you're basically getting a legal racing bike almost. Yeah, the, the the one I uh, I rode was um, it's called a multi strata, which means many roads, and it was more of a call it a sport touring bike. It was quick, right? But you know, more uh, not as aggressive seating position. Uh, you know, a little taller windscreen, some luggage on the side that was from Ducati, right? And so you could take it on the open road. Oh, so it's, it's like a touring bike. But yeah. I mean, with Ducati, it's going to still be fast. I bet. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's The motor was still a lot of juice in the motor. Absolutely. So, so as we, because um, I kind of want to correlate this, as we look at these finely tuned, amazing bikes, and we look at our body <laughs> and what um, is going on, and then we look at COVID-19 and, you know, we're here in New Mexico and I saw the list that the governor put out. You know, and nowhere on there was there any information about building your immune system, right. eating clean, fresh foods, right. you know, and it, you know, and that should be the first things on the list. Well, this is part of the issue is that all of these doing all of these external things, you know, with put a mask on and wash your hands and not to say that, uh, the washing your hands part or even, um, Maybe wearing maybe wearing a mask is helpful, uh, but yeah, you're a hundred percent correct because that's the you know health is an inside out uh, job, you right? Know, it's right. an inside out job, and you know you build that immune system. You have a uh, the other part of this is that not very many people talk about is when I had my clinic in Arizona. You know that would, people would come in with um, with uh, a terminal illness, and the first thing I did with them is well, one of the first things was do a little um, 
let's just say mental detox with them, get their mm. emotions straight. Right. Cause your body will react to those re- emotions and, you know, positive stuff will raise your, uh, will, you know, will, will raise your hormone levels and make you feel better. And, uh, um, the negative stuff will drag you down and make you more vulnerable because you're depressed or anxious mm-hmm. or, or just, you know, just makes life rough. You look at everything and it's, you know, the, the, the picture isn't clear. It's not what you want to see. So anyway, make a long story short. Yeah. You know, the, none of them have spoken, you know, whether you, whatever show you watch, even the doctors, I mean, and I haven't watched, uh, you know, Dr. Oz in a long time, but maybe someone like Dr. Oz will get into building the immune system, but it's, it's one out of a hundred people mm, you know, right. going down that road. Yeah. And, and then when you look at it and you see some of the things like they're talking about the virus, not being able to handle, I think the UV rays of the sun. Well, this is another thing about heat and ultraviolet light. As you, you know, as you do the research, you find out, and let me just take you just a little bit farther down the road, um, you know, working with, uh, you know, different systems to help clean the air. Right. And uh, yeah, there's things you can do to remediate that, but your base health is going to determine your vulnerability. And when you do the statistics with COVID, you find out that 65 age 65 to 75 are the most vulnerable age groups. And what takes it to another level, like with all the people that passed away in these nursing homes is that I would bet you that everyone in that nursing home has a underlying condition that is stressing their immune system already. So people don't realize that. So what, when they're saying underlying conditioning, they're saying that something is putting, because the, immu- the, the immune system to me is the key to health. Uh, yes. If you want to say that, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but I mean, and it's kind of one of the least things that we think about, you know, and I, I've talked to you and that's why I wanted to bring you on and we're going to have you on again uh, coming up very soon. And we're going to kind of get into some more um, esoteric spiritual type things. But um, when it comes to when I, when I came to you a- a asking you like, you know, how, cause that was my concern. How can I build my immune system? So l- let's say you, you're, let's start with somebody that is young and healthy, and then we'll work up. You may be young and healthy in their twenties, some of the things that they can do 20, thirties, you know, cause we have listeners like that. And then we'll get into, you know, my age, you know, I'm fixing to turn 47. Right. And then we'll get into, you know, you know, 65 and older, if that's fine. So let's start with like young, healthy people. What can they do to build their immune system? Well, I'm not a, a big one for taking a lot of supplements, although I do take some. Um, when it comes to your immune system, you know, vitamin D, you know, everybody's heard this before, or most people have vitamin D3 with vitamin K2 as part of the synergistic complex is probably the number one uh, or near the number one supplement you could take because it works with all 25,000 of your genes, but specifically 2,500 that are attached or related to you know, maybe like prostate cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, and so on. So first you want to understand where your levels are. And so you'd go to your physician and you'd have um, uh, what's called a 25 hydroxy D3 blood test. And most people, even when I was living in Arizona, these people would come back at 20 and 30 nanograms per milliliter when the the low acceptable range was around 40 but there you know more and more people are talking that it really needs to be around 60 nanograms per milliliter and and by the way just let me not forget that the sun is the free resource especially if you're d3 resource especially if you're living in you know a place like what we are uh, where it's the, you know, the, the, the sun is out every day of the year. And even in the winter, sometimes you can, you know, catch some decent sun. And, 
But most people, it's proven scientifically, Jerry, that most people are deficient in vitamin D. Absolutely. That's what I'm, what I'm really getting to is that, you know, it's what I say, well, you know, why, you know, why the D3 and all that stuff? I said, well, look at, if we're going to take a trip in your car, aren't we going to check the air in the tires and the oil in the car and so on and so forth? And they say, well, yeah, yeah. Does it make sense? Well, you're going on a trip of a lifetime. And so now mm. the D3 is so important. Right. It's so, so important that uh, with the K2, uh, so the K2 helps to get into the bones. And so you just want to, um, you want to maximize that. And that's where the blood test comes in. The blood test is like the dipstick, you know, in your car checking the oil, you'll know exactly where you are. And most people, sadly, Jason, as you just mentioned, are, are, Horribly low. Yeah, and, 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 and not a lot of people live in, you know, Sedona where you're, you know, where you were living at or Albuquerque where we're at now. Right. Um, you know, I, I came from Washington state, you know, where it's getting dark at like three, three thirty in the afternoon. Right. And, and something I want to touch on too is what's happening when you're under fluorescent lighting all day long sitting at an office. Sure. Well, the other part too, is that those lights, which they will, again, will never tell you. Uh, drains minerals out of your body, all major minerals. It's they're not healthy at all. So not everybody can afford to uh, have their uh, if they're in an office. If you're in your own cubicle, maybe you could get the boss to say, "Hey, you know, I want to change these bulbs out to full spectrum lighting, which uh, actually will enhance your life." Uh, but yeah, the but you can you can go on Amazon or go to. Can you get them at Lowe's or Home Depot? I, th I believe so. Yeah. And it's just full spectrum. Yeah, full spectrum bulbs. Tubes. Bulbs, tubes, yeah. Yes. So, and so you can replace the lighting. That's one thing you can do. And yes. then that allows, then you're, it's not depleting those That's resources right. out of your body. And there are traditional screw-in bulbs also uh, they have now that will also, you know, be of more of a benefit than uh, uh, a excuse me, a negative or a detriment to your, to your health. I, I, I think today you really have to be vigilant because we have so many challenges with food, water, and air. And it gets, I don't want to say it gets worse literally every day, but it's not improving tremendously. So I, I think you really, in the, in the vigilant part, you need to really do every little thing that you can to um, maximize your, you know, your immune strength. So, um, so we're taking a young person. So you're telling them to get outside, get some sunlight, get, get the sun that gives you vitamin D. And then if you need to supplement after you go, you know, you go check with the doctor, see what your vitamin D levels are. If they're right. low, get a vitamin D3 with K2, um, yes. supplement and you can get those, you know, on Amazon, anywhere, yeah, anywhere. Yeah. You can go to your local store or whatever. Um, so when, when it comes to, cause I, I, I've always wanted to ask this question when it comes to supplementation, because everybody wants like a pill to take, you know, it's, it's like our society, you know, there's so many right. people are on prescription drugs and all that stuff, uh, which we'll get into too. But, um, when it comes to being a young person, especially in today's society with, you know, social media and, you know, our phones, we're all glued to our phones. Right. I mean, you're on your phone a lot. I'm on my phone a lot. I mean, everyone is. Right. Um, what are some of the things that you saw, you know, especially in your practice, what, what you saw that can help, um, with health as far as being young, does like meditation work or. Well, everybody's got a, you know, a, a different, um, point where they will center themselves. A lot of people use different types of exercise like yoga and Pilates and, and, um, but meditation, getting the the mind to be silenced. I mean, if you can do it for five minutes or, you know, you're doing it for an hour, uh, you know, it's a huge benefit to take that stress, you know, to eliminate all that stress and, and quiet the chatter. Yeah. And then, so whenever you're, whenever you're looking at someone who's, you know, healthy, and I know you probably had, you had a lot of people in your clinic that were unhealthy and, and we'll kind of get into that arena, but like, what type of foods heal your body? You know, like let's say somebody, let's say somebody's in, you know, late twenties and they're obese. You know, I mean, obviously they're heading down a road that's going to lead to something's going to get them by the time they're 
50, 55, 60, if they're eating fast food all the time. Um, and it's what you put in. What do you, what do you tell people? Is there like a, a simple way that people can start eating better? Cause I know the, you know, they they left fast food open, you know, during COVID they should have shut right. those places down. Right. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Um, you know, at one time I was, uh, 238 pounds, right? So when my father passed away some years ago, uh, I was young, I was only 18, but I immediately lost close to 70 pounds. And I, I took a systematic approach that even at the, at that time was, uh, just to eat small and, and modest amounts. And I ate almost and excuse me, everything at the time, but the point being, I didn't gorge myself, but see right now, Jason, there's so many additives in even, you got to be careful with what they call organic foods mm. that, um, you know, you just got to really be discerning. You just got to read labels. You got to understand some of these, uh, chemicals and fertilizers and, and, um, enhancers that they spray just very quickly, most grains, and this even falls into the into the uh, organic range, are uh, are sprayed with glyphosate. And what the glyphosate does is it dries out the it dries out the uh, uh, let's say the wheat and fluffs it up, and so they get a better yield out of it. Mm. But it's tainted with the glyphosate, uh, chemical, you know? And so, you know, there are blood tests out there that if you really want to manage your life, you can go for heavy metals, you can go for, uh, uh, chemicals. So besides heavy metal being like a, a genre of music, <laughs> heavy metals, what are you talking about? Like, cause I, I always hear that, but like you're talking about testing heavy, what is there bad metals? Do we well, all have bad metals in us? We all typically do. Yes. Uh, cadmium, mercury, zinc, there's, you know, it's the stuff's in the air. It's, it's in the paint. I, I, I remember everywhere. seeing, you know, like advertisements for mercury paint. Yeah. You know, like they would put it into, and then people were, you know, it, do you think a lot of the metals are issues that we're having with cancer? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Every person that I had come in the clinic, you know, we would take, you know, do a, 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 f a full blood work up on them and the, the metals, <clears throat> the metals got to go. You got to, you got to chelate them out. Right. And it takes, you know, it takes time for that to happen. And people, you know, when you go over the reports with them, the you know the blood test report, they, oh my God, I, I didn't read this. So I, I give them, you know, uh, a, a very simple report to read about what heavy metals do to your body, and so uh, and how they impair the immune system, and you know if they get lodged in the brain, which some of them do, they can, you know, compromise your cognitive abilities after time. So they're just, um, it's a real. <laughs> It's like I say, you really got to be super vigilant. So when you would test people that had major diseases, a lot of them had a lot of heavy metals in them? Oh, yeah. Wow. Absolutely. So that's a test. I mean, what, what was the average age of the people that were coming in that were seeing all this metal? Because this would be metals of years and years, right? Yeah. Uh, is, is it people in their 50s? I would say 40 to 60. 40 to 60? Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so if, you're, if you're 40 years old and you haven't had a heavy metal test then that would be something that you need to do. I would think so. Right. Um, so when we look at, so I want to move past like younger people. We know they need to go out, check your vitamin D levels. Um, they need to be active. A lot of these. Yes. Young, yes. They need to really be active. The body is designed for certain types of, excuse me, for certain types of stress and uh, sports, uh, you know, throwing the ball around, running, a certain amount lifting weights, yeah, lifting right. weights, you know, yeah, exactly. Resistance training, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Exactly. And that's huge. You know, that's huge. And it, uh, and you know, you just feel better because you get an endorphin rush off of it. Right. And, and that heavy breathing helps and you're, you're flushing out, <clears throat> you're flushing out your lymphatics, your, your, your lymph glands. And that's what uh, the lymph 
basically purifies all the blood, goes through the lymph. So you want to, you want to, you, know, you want to stay active, you know? So like running or, or doing these exercises is actually cleaning your blood. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, yeah, you're oxygenating your blood too, because if you're wearing a mask, what I would recommend to everybody, I think you can afford 10 to $15, whether you go on eBay or you go to your local uh, um, CVS or Walgreens, you buy a pulse oximeter. It snaps onto your, your index finger and it will tell you your pulse, but it will also tell you your oxygen levels in your blood. And uh, when you have the mask off, you'll see that a healthy person is somewhere, let's just say around 95% oxygen in their blood. You want as much oxygen as you can get. And so uh, when you put the mask on, I have heard, I haven't seen this personally, I have heard that it drops at at least 10 to 15 points. And so these are things that you're not being told that are important to understand. You know, take my word for it, just go down the, you know, just go down the rabbit hole and, and start doing a little research and you'll see that, you know, you want to have a uh, uh, oxygen levels of your blood in the, let's just say mid 90 range. And that's, that's healthy because oxygen is a uh, is something that will. Let me say it this way: all cancers, all cancers manifest from low oxygen in the blood. It's part of it. Right, it's all part of it. So you want to keep your. <clears throat> now I've heard about that. That's why people have done those um, oxygen chambers and. Yeah, you have. Well, we had a big hy- hyperbaric chamber, yes, and that does really, really help to get the you know, to get your, um, to get your oxygen levels up. And of course you train yourself to, you know, go out and do some walking for 15, 20 minutes. It's, you know, you build up to a, a good pace and you've got your little pulse oximeter on and you're, you'll see you're at 98% uh, oxygen in your blood. And this is, this is, you know, basically where you want to be. And, and so, you know, like they, they call it biohacking and all that stuff, you know, with bodies. But this is a quick little thing you can do for 10, 15 bucks. Yeah. It's, and then you can see just going out and walking in the sunlight. You're going to be able to see just off of this. You'll be able to see how you're improving yourself. That's 100% correct. I uh, I have one at home. I haven't used it a lot lately because I have a very good feel for where, you know, where I'm at based on the regimen that I, I, I the health regimen that I do. Um but yeah, uh, these are little, little tools that, you know, you take better control of your, you know, of your own health. There's no guessing. Right. There's no guessing that it's like I say, it shows you your pulse and it shows you your, um, your oxygen. Levels. So let's get into somebody that is, you know, 40, 45 you know, 50 year old around there. And they're, um, looking at maybe being able to, um, cause I'm, I think, I feel like I'm going to put this on my other podcast, my entrepreneur podcast too. Um, cause I want to be able to, I want people to be able to hear this. So, um, when you're looking at, when you're looking at maybe 40 year old guy, he's an entrepreneur business person. I mean, you, you're very entrepreneurial too. Um, you've been there when you start getting middle age, what begins to happen and, and what can you start to see? What, what were you seeing when you saw 40 year olds coming in? Well, there's always stress that's part of it. So in Sedona, uh, when I was there and we had the clinic, there are timeshare resorts there. Mm. And so the sales guys that made a lot of money, I mean, making 30, 40 grand a month, you know, were also the most stressed, you know, they were wound really tight. So the smart ones would come in and they'd, um, I had a tool at that time, uh, uh, that was created by a company called Zyto, Z-Y-T-O. Uh, they're in Utah. I forgot the exact city, but they're still in business. And it would do a scan on the body and show where all the stressors, all, where all the, what the stressors were and where they were. Is it perfect? No, but it was, it was a good roadmap for having a person understand it's like stressor are you talking about like a, a muscle ache or are you talking about like a, a, a migraine well it, it could be physical like that uh but it could be stuff where um you've got um 
how can I say this? Um, yeah, you've got buildup of unwanted elements starting to take like place. emotionally, like yeah, maybe, and their may- emotions were a big part of it. Yeah, like something it. happened when they were a child or something right. like that. They that's haven't a, dealt with. Yeah, that's a big thing, absolutely. And and so anyway, uh, you know, if, if you're managing your life correctly, you have a balance. That balance has you know quality food quality relationships, uh, quality lifestyle in general. And um, what am I missing here? You know, in that you understand the rhythms of your body because they're changing all the time. And and to be self-aware enough to understand those rhythms. Most people like they, you know, as, as we know, we'll we'll spend more time (laughs) planning a vacation or something like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Then, you know, looking at their, uh, then looking at the finer points uh, of their life. It's just, it, when it, when, when I turned 40, the, one of the things that helped me more than anything is getting blood work. Somebody had told me about it and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got it. And then, you know, even though I had a doctor go through all my blood work with me, I went through and I looked up each one on Google, you know, and they always say, if you're, don't look stuff up on Google for medical, you know, or whatever, because Everybody winds up with the terminal illness, you know, when you go on WebMD and stuff like that. But it was really interesting to be able to understand like glucose levels and and, right. and and start to see, I could see things. And then as I started getting my blood work done, you know, every six months and then now I'm quarterly, you know, because I want the data and I want to see what's going on. Yes, and then if fun. levels changes or something like that, and I know that's what you did. Um, when, when you're 40 and you, what are some of the things that you saw that were out of whack when people were looking at like was w- whether it's blood work or whatever you said stress. I know that's a, a, a big one, uh, but what, what were some of those things when you would look at somebody's blood work? Well, depending on how they ate, you'd see, you know, the glucose levels, not really uh, all that healthy. And uh, I'm trying to remember now exactly what order, uh, well, you see hormone imbalances were big because <clears throat> people are drinking and eating out of plastic and the plastic, when you heat it up or, or cool it. Like putting, pla- like you told me about that and I stopped doing that, you know, like putting yeah. plastic in a microwave, Yeah, well, heat more, even though I, I have healthy food in there, right? you know, cause I meal prep and do all that, you know, so I have it all healthy in there, but I'm putting that plastic container that I got at Costco and I'm putting it in a microwave to warm up the food. And I, I'm making myself have hormonal imbalances. That's correct. And that's where, uh, you know, that's where problems can start also with, you know, a man is, you know, not designed to have an imb- high, you know, higher levels of, of estrogen. Right. Wh- which a lot of men have higher levels of estrogen, well, especially look, when they're 40. Yeah. Right. You can look at them and can tell almost a hundred percent of the time, um, uh, you know, if their um, if their hormone levels are big, just by looking at them, you can see the their their breasts. You can see how much belly fat they're carrying. Uh, you can it becomes very very noticeable, very noticeable. Yeah, and I I think one of the big things with hormone levels too, when you're looking in your forties, what were you seeing with guys with testosterone? When they had adequate, yeah, yeah, no, no. When they, when they, a lot of people have low testosterone, right? Right. A lot of guys have high estrogen, low testosterone. So that right there alone is throwing you out of whack if you're a man. Well, absolutely. And this all goes back to that, that, that word about balance and understanding um, your unique makeup, because there is, there's only one of you, right? And you know that person has its own unique set of numbers and uh, um, a relationship to those numbers that only you can control through, again, lifestyle habits. And you can go get um, testosterone tests. You can ask oh, your yeah. doctor for those, all those. Yeah. And and even if you pay for them at the lab, a lot of it is not, it's, it's not that expensive for no. any of these tests. You know, I, there are places online that do offer, um, this type of testing. And yeah, uh, I, I just think it's, you know, it's smart to, 
to do that once you start turning 40s. Right. What what were you seeing? So so I know most of your patients, you know, 40 to 60 were coming in and, you know, they're like, I got diagnosed with this or I got diagnosed with that. And so did you start with like diet right off the bat? You know, like somebody got diagnosed with something serious, like what an underlying condition would be something serious that COVID's taken, you know, I, I hate to say that, but it seems to be that underlying condition then COVID hit, then they get COVID. And then it seems like, like the flu or anything else, you know, it seems like it's, um, you know, killing people that way. What were you, what were you seeing with these underlying conditions? Was it just bad diet? You know, when, when they're 40 to 60? Yeah, the lifestyle habits, uh, too much sugar basically is a lot of it, too many too many grains because the grains are tainted. And uh, that's, you know, basically what I saw. I, you know, I would try to start somebody, well, there'd be an intake, okay? I wouldn't jump right into this. There'd be an intake. Let me get to know you a little bit, talk about, I'd get them to talk a lot about their lifestyle, ha- lifestyle habits, what they love, their sports and you know, get them very comfortable with me. And then, um, I, you know, I eventually somewhere I'd bring up, um, simple and free things that they can do like intermittent fasting, Mm -hmm. which is a great, you know, fix for a lot of metabolic issues with time, of course. So this old proverbial eat breakfast at eight in the morning, eat lunch at 12, eat dinner at five and it's all carbohydrates and, you know, just, you know, mashed potatoes and gravy and all that. Um, that, that, that was for farmers that work seven days a week that work 15 hour days, sitting at a desk and eating three meals a day. No, that's, that model is now some people have to, they say, I don't know. I, I've intermittent fasted anywhere from 18 to 24 hours without a problem. And, um, yeah, I usually go, I intermittent fast. I usually go 12, 15 hours. Yeah, it's pretty it's easy. 15, 18, I can do too. Yeah. After 18, I start getting, I think it's low sugar or something maybe. It could be. could be. I, I don't want to say I do 24 uh, a lot, but let's just say for sure right around. I try to eat my last meal around 6 p.m. and then eat my next meal at noon the next oh, day. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's 18. So you're eliminating all the late night snacking and all that stuff. Yeah, I I, I may have a piece of fruit or uh, some berries, you know, this fruit, of course. But the point being is I just keep it as simple as I can. So you, you skip breakfast, you let your body. So Well, not lately. Lately, I've been, you know, I, I want to be honest, I've been eating a little bit. There's some- well, you, you're, you're having to eat because you had a, uh, I want people to know, you had a punctured lung in, um, in a motorcycle accident, right? Right, yes. And so then here recently, you actually got sick. You know, it wasn't COVID, but um, you had a lung infection because of the punctured lung. Yes. I mean, I, I mean, if somebody looks altitude. at Jerry, yeah, and the altitude, the altitude. change yeah. from yeah. coming here. Um, so, uh, but normally when you look at intermittent fasting, I, I feel like we were built that way. You know, I mean, like if you look at, if you go back millions of years, everybody would eat when they hunted, when they harvested, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't the amount of food that we have available to us all the time. Well, yes. You know, a lot of these hunter gatherer types didn't eat every day. Right. And the food wasn't available. So it's just, um, but now everywhere you turn around, you know, you go to a checkout, there's. Slim Jims and a Coke. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? I mean, our M&Ms, our Reese's I, Pieces. Right. I mean, everything is packaged beautifully. Yeah. And of course, they catch you around lunch or dinner or an in-between time. Boom. You know, what was funny with me when I started eating good was the first time I went by myself and I really paid attention. I went to Walmart. This was the first realization. I went to Walmart and I started walking down at a grocery store, Walmart, and I started walking down the aisle and I was just walking down that whole aisle. And I was like, I can't eat this. I can't eat that. I can't eat this. I can't eat that. And I go down a whole aisle and then I went to the next aisle and I was like, this is not good for me. This is not good for me. This is not. And and I was just like, and these purple and blue and yellow and orange packaging, you know, that the food and the food industry, if you guys want to see an industry that's, that's corrupt (laughs) with the food and drug administration, (laughs) I mean, you know about this Jerry, but uh, the food industry and then the way that um, they have, you know, with the food pyramid, 
Right. <laughs> All of that is the monocropping. Right. You know, there's no regenerative farming anymore. Um, when, when you look at all of this, the spring, like you said, everything is for profit margins. Well, you know, it's, you know, like Jerry Maguire, show me the money, you know, and that's what they're, they're all about. They want, you know, it's all about the money. And that's just uh, sadly the way it is. And they put people out of business. Right. They, uh, or they make it very, very difficult for them to make a profit. I think last year, if I'm not mistaken, and it could be that uh, I can't, they had a record number of farmers go, you know, go out of business mm -hmm. because they can't, you know, just couldn't get their their crops to market or what, I can't remember exactly what was going well, on. Well, e even when you go and, you know, you can watch all these, uh, you can watch all these documentaries they're putting on Netflix and all that now, you know, but when you look at, when you look at the way, you know, these pigs are in their own shit and, right. you know, they're eating this, um, you know, uh, corrupted, or I don't know what word you would use this tainted grain, right. You know, and, and that's just all they're eating. So, and then you know, most of it's GMO, you know, GMO yeah, right. right. And, and, and when you look at all that and then you're seeing people and they're just year after year after year, they're just putting this garbage into their body. So when you do turn 40, 45, 50, that's when you're starting to see when obesity is so high. Yeah. Well, that's again, a big, you know, a big part of the problem. And, uh, it's, you know, it starts with the food, it starts with your consciousness, then your habits, your lifestyle habits. And uh, as above, so below, as below, so above. And so you start to, you know, reap what you sow. And uh, if you're taking a lot of sugar and a lot of grains, the prognosis for that health-wise is probably not all that good because there's, you know, what's called hidden fat in the body also that, that uh, encompasses the, you know, your internal organs, you know, like your liver and, and your gallbladder and uh, uh, your pancreas and so on that, um, you know, uh, can be very health compromising. And then, you know, a lot of people who start to go on a, a fast food, you know, they eat a disproportionate amount of fast food. Yeah, they're just swinging to the drive through real quick because they're going from meeting to meeting to meeting. Right. They have also have bad digestion and everything, you know, digestion, uh, absorption and elimination. And that channel has got to be clear because in the gut, there is a, a nerve called the vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S, the vagus nerve communicates with the brain. So it's this, like our second brain, they say. The second brain. Absolutely. Very good. And uh, as above, so below, you know, as below, so above. And so if you're taking in a lot of, uh, you know, sodas and, and foods, again, that give you a quick, a quick high and a big letdown, well, you're not really working <clears throat> or thinking or being at your optimal level. You know, and I, I don't know if you can testify to this or not, but I've had lots of friends that I've got them off of, you know, fast food and, and garbage food and they started eating cleanly. And then they went to this detox period that was horrific, you right. know. Oh, yeah. Breaking out with acne or, you know, on their back or whatever, um, smelling bad, you know, right. all these different things. Um, but one of the things that I noticed once they got past the detox and they, of course, they felt amazing, but depression levels, like they were, they were depressed and there's, there's gotta be a connection with this fast food and depression because I, I see, you see the suicide rate, like they just came up for New Mexico. It just came out and we're at the highest rate ever for suicides. Oh, really? wow. Yeah. Um, you know, out of years and years, we're at the highest rate. I think it was like over 500 people. So if you think about that, that's almost to a day, you know? Um, so, I mean, that's horrific. So, but when you're seeing, you know, this obesity levels and you're seeing, you know, us eating this garbage food, it's like when you clean, like when I started cleaning up my life, you know, cause I had bouts of, I get bouts of really bad depression, mm -hmm. you know, and it was always in time. And I, I began to follow this pattern. It was always the time when I was eating like gar when I was eating garbage, mm. you know, and, and I, it's like you said, I think there's a connection with the brain and your gut with that nerve that you mentioned, the vagus nerve. because for me, when I started the, the cleaner I eat, the better I eat. I, uh, that depression fog, I like to call it a fog. It's yeah. like a fog in my brain just clears up. Yeah. Well, that's, well, again, you know, you're not taking in the, the chemicals. You're not getting the, the sugar carbohydrate rush there. 
there's just so much that's happening when you stay away and it's all beneficial. Like you just described that, uh, it's just hard to change sometimes lifestyle habits. It just, right. Right. On, On the eating side of things. So one thing before we forget, I want, you told me something to get for, um, cause my estrogen levels were a little bit high. Yeah. And then you shared a supplement with me, and I want to share that if somebody's listening. If you're a man, yeah, well, women can take it too. Excuse me. <coughs> there it is. Yeah, it's um, a derivative of uh, crucifer- cruciferous vegetables uh, called d methane, or how it's always labeled is DIM, capital D, capital I, capital M, and what this what DIM does is it gets in your bloodstream and helps move out the estrogen naturally. Mm. And you can eat uh, cruciferous vegetables if you like your broccoli and and your cauliflower and so on. If you like those, that's great. But when you concentrate it down into three to 400 milligram uh, uh, capsule a couple of times a day, it's just more concentrated because it, it's going to go right to the bloodstream. Right. It's going to go right to the bloodstream. So, yeah. So, it's the, D, like DIM, like dimming dim. a light, but yeah, DIM, like, all capitals. DIM, right. D indole methane. And, um, I mean, there's, you know, a, a lot of different brands out there. And so, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to recommend a brand because I don't. You know, I, I don't. You've tried them. You've probably tried them all, though. Well, I've, tried, <laughs> I've tried a few. I've, there was one with... Um, Another hormone, uh, hormone balancing uh, uh, additive with Dong Kwai in there, and there's a, that's another brand. I can't forgot the name of the brand right now, but you know if you keep it real simple in the beginning and just work with the dim for ninety to one hundred and twenty days, and you modify some of your 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 dietary habits, you'll see you'll feel better and you'll look better. It's you know probably can drop ten you know if you want to drop ten or fifteen pounds. Yeah, crazy. because a lot of guys that have high estrogen levels have that tire around their waist. Yes, that's exactly it. And they have the flabby upper chest. Right. And um, they get tits. <laughs> very good. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so um, sooner or later, there's a price for imbalance. We'll just say it that way. I like that. That's good. There's a price. Sooner right. or later, you you get it done now and you monitor it now and you get control of it now or you pay later. It's one way or the other, you know, and the last thing you want to do is, you know, uh, go under the knife or go under some, you know, severe uh, life li- lifestyle, you know, diet. I hate that word. But, you know, you you have to make severe changes because you let it go for five or ten extra years. Right. And then and then you finally retire. And then five years later, you're gone. You're gone. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's, I think it's seven years the average guy lives after after retirement. <laughs> so it's just one of these things that um, pay now or pay later. And I think, I, I think like you said, you know, um, getting your head space right, getting your, um, being active, doing those things. You know, like I have a friend of mine, he's probably 66, 67, and he golfs almost every day. So, you know, he's walking, you know, what, six miles or something. If he's, he does 18 holes, you know, and he walks with the, with the car. I mean, he's doesn't use a car. And that's one thing I always tell people, you know, if, if you love golfing, if that's something that you love, don't take a cart, get out. That's just be walk, take that time. Exactly. To well, think, to contemplate. Again, you know, uh, you can, I have had so many friends talk about retirement, you know, over the years. Right. And I've had so many friends not be here anymore or just not doing well where they can't, they're going from one doctor's appointment to the other. And they used to laugh at me when I, uh, you know, some years ago when I really got into this health stuff and, uh, you know, health, not and all that, this is in the, this is, I hate to say it, but this is like in the, in the, you know, mid, mid to later sixties. And, um, a lot of my friends or people that I knew they're gone or they're not doing well Well, at all. 
And that's the worst thing you can do is be on a ton of medications, not doing well, and just sitting there and all you can do is sit on a couch and watch TV. Yeah, well, that's the the point. You're like almost anesthetized and you're not in your body anymore. You're really not because the drugs do take over. They, they, certain drugs will change your metabolism and uh, affect you mentally. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen people, you know, certain drugs can affect people mentally big time. Yeah, exactly. And so... I just, you know, again, if, if people want to live uh, at, you know, uh, 200 mile an hour lifestyle, so to speak, you know, they're eating all the wrong foods and they're maybe consuming a little too much alcohol and, you know, not getting the proper rest, you know, there's to pay me now or pay me later. You got to bring it back. So did you see a lot of people that were coming in your clinic that drink a lot of alcohol and were, um, and were sick? What are, you know, what, what's your view on, what's your view on alcohol? I know wines are good. You know, it's like yeah. some wines are good, they say, or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I had a couple of clients that, you know, had a couple of, a couple of shots of some kind of a whiskey uh, a day and they were doing fine, but they, they didn't smoke. Right. And they paid attention to their lifestyle. So there's, there's some trade-offs. There's some, the- yeah. So if you're, that's a great, that's a great thing. So if, if you, if you have a, this little indulgence, whatever it may right. be, um, keep it in moderation. I would, I would say, right. think you would say that, but then at, at the, uh, that other part is there's a trade-off. Like you said, that's such a good word, a trade-off, yeah. you know, you need to say, okay, I need to eat really clean. You know, if I'm like to have, you know, one or two, you know, uh, glasses of whiskey or something, or, 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 you know, um, I know that's a thing now with, you know, people that like 40 to, you know, 40 and older are drinking wine, you know, and the next thing you know, they're drinking a bottle of wine a night, every night, seven days a week, you know? Yeah. Uh, some years ago, I don't know if I got into the bottle every night. This is going back when I was still in Sedona, but I know at least a couple of times a week I would. And then all of a sudden I said, man, this ain't you at all. Mm. And it was organic wine. I've used every excuse. I was in my own denial phase. And <clears throat> do you think it just, just became a habit? Yeah, somehow, you know, somehow it came a habit. And it was interesting because the, um, I forgot the name of this, this small, uh, uh, I want to say it was a deli. Let's call it a small supermarket. I forgot the name of them, but they really had the best, the best wine section Mm. ever. I mean, it was all, most of them were organics and, uh, or, uh, you know, South American wines. And so, man, you know, you get them home and they, uh, you know, they're just great. But, um, that wasn't my, uh, that wasn't, that really wasn't me. And maybe after about a month or two of doing that, uh, I just, you know, woke up one day and I said, yeah, I'm done. Mm. You know, I'm done with this. You know, I'm done with it. And, you know, just like right now, if someone had asked me, well, when did you have your last glass of wine? I, I honestly can't remember, but probably somewhere uh, before when I left for, uh, when I left California to come here. Mm. months. It's, mm. That's the same. That's the same with me. I haven't, I'm just trying it, you know, cause I got in the habit of um, coming home, de-stressing and how I would de-stress is I would drink or I'd go some, meet somebody. I would drink these IPA beers, you know? And so I just have like one or two of them, but they just, you know, to me taste amazing and really liked them. But I was, then I got into the habit where I was doing it every night. Yeah. So then I had to turn around and say, and beer's really bad for you because it's got a lot of grain in it that raises your estrogen levels up really high. Sure. You know, there's a, a lot of, but having one or two every once in a while, like I said, like you said, there's a trade off, you know, and, and one of the things I found is if I am going to have some beer, um, is to, you know, drink one beer and then drink two or three glasses of water. Okay. So, you know, that, that helps, you know, or just say, okay, I'm going to have one IPA and then I'll have one light beer, you know, and then at that, in that process, I'll drink, you know, three to six glasses of water, you know, and then that, that, that is a little bit more healthy. But so like, whenever you look at, at somebody that, you know, maybe in their sixties, you know, like you, you were talking about friends or stuff, maybe they have some underlying conditions, right. you know, that maybe they've had colon cancer and they had a surgery or not just colon cancer, but anything, maybe they have diabetes or whatever. What were some of the things that you saw that dramatically changed people? Well, 
Well, because I know you probably have stories. Well, facing their own mortality in general was the number one thing. It's pretty, you know, they're right. <laughs> I mean, that that's that's a hard that that would be the so to you that would be the number one thing that you would need to do if if you're if you're coming in and you're looking at and you're looking at someone that is. <laughs> And you're looking at someone that it has underlying conditions. They're not doing that well. They come into your clinic. The first thing they need to get, they need to get the head right as far oh. as that they could pass away. Right. And here's the, the point. I'd ask everyone, who else have you seen? What other practitioners have you seen? Right. And then the next question, after they tell me this, I say, did you do what they asked you to do? Hmm. And well, I, you know, you know, there, if there was this hesitation, I say, well, look, you know, I want to help you, but I don't have any magic wands two miles from where you just were. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I mean, I, I probably have a lot of the same, I don't want to use the word script exactly. I'm probably going to say a lot of the same things that, <laughs> that you've already heard. And it's up to you to take action, whether we do the inch by inch method, which I prefer, uh, or, you know, you take charge of it some way, but based on what you've told me, there's some lifestyle things, you know, lifestyle habits that just, they've got to be modified. So, modified. so, so you would kind of have like a, uh, pardon my French, but you'd have like a come to Jesus meeting, like a hundred percent. Yeah. And like, okay, you, first you need to get in touch that you're going to die and die very soon. Yeah. And, and let's work on that yeah. because you're not doing the things that you were told to do. Yeah, exactly. And this is still, you know, happens every day here. I, it's, it's very high. Personally, my weakness in the, in the health business was when I got to know somebody and I got to like them, it was very hard to see them spiral Mm. spiral down, you know, and we're doing everything that we can. And a lot of it, a lot of it was, they couldn't let go of certain guilt, you know, the mental parts of the. So you're saying more than the, more than the, the diet or supplementing or anything, it was, there was a guilt that they couldn't let go. Yeah. Whether it be, you know, child abuse or. Just, you know, just feeling like a divorce, a or, divorce like right. feeling like a failure. Yeah. A regret. A regret. Perfect. Yeah. And so there were things, and I've gone through those myself. I don't have anything down perfect, but I've worked on it. And, uh, you know, I've come to terms with things pretty well these days, but the, you know. I know we've talked about that. I yeah. mean, yeah, we've, we've talked about afterlife and all that. Yeah. Um, and when you're looking at, uh, you know, I mean, you're 70 and you could live another 40, 50 years, you know? So, um, but we, we, we've talked about all of that and have you ha- have like, how comfortable are you in that arena? Like personally with, with the afterlife? Oh, I'm very comfortable. I'm actually looking forward to it. Hmm. See, I, I don't, I think see, for like me, my age, I would feel like, uh, I feel, I feel fear. When I think of the afterlife, and even though, even though I study it out and I read a ton of books and stuff like that. And that's not uncommon between 40 and 50 or 40 and I think 40 and 50, that's not all that uncommon. It's just that for me, when I, you know, and again, if I can just say this, this way, I've had a very good life. Mm. I've had a lot of fun. I know you've told me stories. You've had tons of fun. Yeah, you know? I've had a lot of fun and it's been a good life and you've helped a lot of people. Yeah, I helped, you know, a few. And and the point being is that to me, and if I do live another 20 or 30 or 40 years, that's okay, so be it. But I'm preparing for the next great adventure, Mm. which is as I take my last breath, uh, I'll just say it openly, as my lovely who was over there already grabs me by the hand and we just walk into the next realm, you know, into the next dimension. So these are the, you know, the things that 
we all have priorities. I still, you know, I still like sports. I still like motorcycles. I still like business. I still like helping people. But that uh, uh, that next adventure is what you're looking for. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking I'm looking forward to it, just because it's an adventure. That was uh, you know it's part of my theme of my of the life here was always about adventure. No, I and love when, that. When I look at my astrology and I look at my numerology, everything points to adventure. You know, a lot of change in life, and it's been honestly. It's been some of the best. It's been, again, it's all relative. It's just been some of the best experiences ever. Meeting the people, as you said, helping the people, and then just being, here's the part, being, uh, having the gratitude and thanking the great spirit for these opportunities to, uh, to, to have this. You know, the great I am is is going, you know, paying uh, honor to because just the way I feel about it, you know. So, so you, so you, because you, you didn't have any hesitant when you said very much and very much so. So you're, you're prepared. You've got that down. I, I know there's a lot of people that may be, so you would say that would be the number one thing to do to get in that headspace where you could be prepared for that. But is there like, what, you know, like if somebody, if somebody's sick, you know, like sick, what would be some of the things that you would tell them? It, it, one, to be prepared, obviously. Number two, if they're willing to make changes, maybe it scared them enough to where they're willing to make changes. Well, it depends on where they are in the, you know, how close they are to transitioning. <clears throat> but in that transition period, if they can't, you know, if they're, it's over, which Almost anything can be turned around. Oh, there are things, you know, once a doctor puts a, puts, well, you know, you got three months to live, boom, three months to the day, person drops like right. a rock. Right. And so it just depends. But I say, get your mental house in order. Use a lot of forgiveness. Take a lot of gratitude, regardless of your life. Because I come from a very humble background, extremely humble background and uh, working class family stuff. And, uh, could it have been better? Well, there were times I thought it could have been better. But then when I looked at my own life and I realized that everything is how it's supposed to be. Hmm. You know, it sounds, I know, that sounds uh, woo-wee and all that stuff. Okay, I'll own that. But here's the point is that I accept it. And it feels better because it's, okay, it's accepted. Now I accept that everything is perfect. It could, would I have liked it? My dearest friend, my friend Jimmy, who lived two doors away from me, uh, his family, and the other thing is like the like the Cleavers, you know, from mm-hmm. the old Leave It to Beaver TV show. They were, you know, they were just just such a, a well oiled family, so to speak. That, right, which is rare. <laughs> yeah. Well, back in that day, in the neighborhood I looked at, lived in the working class neighborhood, there were a fair amount of uh, you know families that were really I'll use the word grounded. You know, right, really right. Good families. And so uh, I didn't have that, but it's all okay. It all worked out. Right. And so that's, that's, uh, the, you know, I never would have thought that you would have said that, you know, cause I was thinking so like uh, do this for your body or, or get this. I never would have thought that, you know, first thing to do would be to get okay with dying. And then once you're okay with dying, now it's time to practice forgiveness, gratitude, you know, it, it seems so simple. And I, th- I think we all need to do that. You know, why, why wait till you get a death sentence right. before you forgive someone? Well, you know, just very quickly on that note, if I can speak again openly, you know, I, I, uh, I had a, uh, a stepfather and an uncle that took some liberties with me at, in, in, uh, in, in my younger ages. And I held a lot of anger for them both. They're both, uh, they're both dead. I tried to track... I tried to track the stepfather down. I saw that he had died some years ago and I knew my uncle uh, had passed away. God, like 1962 or something like that. But I held a lot of anger. And then all of a sudden there was a progression to get to the point where I just forgive him. 
you had you had to let that go to. for your own sanity. Yeah, it, it you know it creates more of a burden on you than it does on them because they're gone, and now you're carrying around this this you know this burden, this mental burden that just you know makes you um, it can make you pretty angry. You know? Yeah, I, I I had to deal with a lot of that, and in, in, you know not to that severity, but what I, uh, <clears throat> I I I just always went back to that statement. I love it. Uh, you know, hurting people hurt people. Yeah. So if they're hurting inside, the bigger the hurt, the bigger they're hurting others. You know what I mean? True. So for my forgiveness is not to condone what they've done, but that I can show compassion on them for that part that they're hurting in. Right. And on, on this life, they may not figure it out and they pass on and they go to the next life. And hopefully in that next life, they you know, they move on and, and they progress in their conscious level, you know, into a higher conscious and, and they learn from all these, you know, aggressions that they've done. But that hurt um, can be, to me, can be multiple lives. You know, you could have something that, you know, and that reaction to that is to do this to a person, you know. Right. So it, it's created a lot more compassion in me to look at people and not be dismissive towards it, but to look at people and be like, okay, I understand, you know. You're, you, there's a reason why, you know, we look at the most horrific person probably that we could think of, and that would be Hitler, right. you know, and, but he was probably one of the most troubled people right. He was hurting inside, right? you know, and the things that he did was, you know, his mom and, you know, the whole story with that. And, you know, and then in World War One, when he almost, you know, died and, right. and, and I don't like, we don't need to get into his lifestyle, but you could see that this man was troubled and he was hurting, mm -hmm. you know, and through that hurt, he hurt you know, I mean, millions of people. Right. I mean, I mean, you know, you're from back East, you know, probably family member. I mean, you've probably my known. Mother. My yes. mother was from Poland and uh, she left there just, I don't know if it was days or weeks, but it was pretty close. He said, uh, I had a, a guy on a social advocate guy on a while back on my business podcast and he shared a story with me I'll never forget. And this was just a couple months ago. He said when they were in Poland, um, uh, you know, they were taking, they would take uh, Jewish people to the cattle carts and stuff like that, line them up, have them get their baggages, you know, and then take them. And he's like, it got to the point to where people would just shut the blinds. Hmm. You know, people would see, they kind of knew what was going on, but right. it wasn't them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they would just, they didn't want to see it. So they would just shut the blinds. And I, I just, that really got to me. I was like, how many times in our life have we just shut the blinds? You know what I mean? Like there's things that have happened, you know, and we didn't take, and we're kind of go, going off here and we'll have to be done soon, but we didn't take the courage, right. you know, and then, and I think the biggest word uh, that you said that I really, really like um, and something that people need to get with, especially in the mental is regret. I think when the older you, the, well, I'm starting to see that now, like, yes. you know, I'm, I'm, fixing to turn 47. And I say, I wish I would have done this a little bit better. I wish I would do that, you know, but taking the, I wish, and then taking the action, that, that little space in between that, that is something that's really, it takes, it's, it's, am I shutting the blinds to this or am I being courageous? You know what I mean? So how did you get, cause I want to ask this for people. Cause I think this is going to help a lot of people. How did you get to the point where you started displaying forgiveness and gratitude? Well, I, I got on a path of, in my, let me think about this now, in my late 20s, early 30s of personal improvement. And uh, the company that created a lot of great uh, audio cassettes was a company out of Chicago called Nightingale Conant. Right. And um, I started listening to Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, uh, Oh, I can't. Remember. Well, even the, the, they have a ton of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even back to Napoleon Hill and all that. Yeah, all yeah. the Napoleon Hill stuff, of course. And, uh, and so that, you know, my car became a little bit of a rolling uh, university, we'll call it, or a school room. And so when I was uh, 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 working in the direct mail business, I'd go on these long road trips and I'd listen to these tapes over and over. And some of it stuck, and I think that's where uh, uh, what opened me up. I think mm. that's what opened me up. 
But I just say to, to anybody is that when you're carrying something around you can't change, that's a choice. Mm. And it may not be easy to put it down. So that's where maybe, you know, a third party comes in, like a little bit of a counselor and stuff, and you work through it together. You know, it may be a little bit easier. And I did some of that too. And so, uh, but you got to show a willingness to want to change your paradigm because insanity is doing the same thing yes. over and over, mm -hmm. expecting a different result. I love that. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great uh, metaphor, or whatever. Saying. But we we love comfort so much, especially <laughs> yeah. here in the United States, that we'll 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 deal with the insanity if we can have the comfort, you know. Mm. And, um, and so, I, and I think there's, you'll see when you see entrepreneur type people, you always, I always hear that story, the, the, the rolling university, you know, and I do that. And I know you do that. We're always, and now with the internet and with podcasting, like we're on right now and all these things, there's so much of this information that's available. Right. There's so many hours online that you can't even in your lifetime get through. Well, you know, on this on that point, um, we used to pay hundreds of dollars for her. To, right. Remember the, the, I used to, but when I was a kid, I would buy them, you know, you'd pay like 99, 95 and you would get like eight cassette tapes right. in the vinyl thing. Remember the vinyl yeah, thing that course. would open, it would cut you on the sides. Right. <laughs> well, you know, uh, what was I going to say here? Oh, I don't even have television at home. I have a TV at, uh, at my apartment, but it's a brand new television sitting in the box from uh, Costco. I haven't hooked it up. And most of the uh, stuff I watch are, you know, different people talking about different subjects on YouTube. You That's know? what I do. Exactly. hundred percent. I don't, I cannot remember the last time. Honestly, I cannot remember the last time I watched a TV show or a movie. Yeah. And I'm not opposed to those things, you know, um, I like action movies, you know, like yeah, war, any war type stuff. Right. And if a good one comes out and I hear about it, I'd probably take the time to watch it. But um, I, I, I just, I, when I go on YouTube, there's just so many documentaries and yes. so much information on there. And it's like, that's what I want to fill my mind with. Yes. You know, I want to get those things that I want, I want things that elevate me, you know, to that point. Mm -hmm. um, so forgiveness, gratitude, you know, being looking at, cause I want to wrap this up cause we've gone over an hour now, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> hour and seven minutes, okay. which is awesome. And we're going to have you back. Cause we're going to, we're going to share almost like a, I would say it's almost like a love story. <laughs> um, and we're going to, we're going to get into that. Uh, and I'm, I'll have Alex here. Um, but one of the things that I, I want people to understand is you can work on the physical all you want. Right. Um, you can work on the mental all you want, but the spiritual aspect I think is that part that is missing, especially here in the United States, because we're getting away from, and I'm not talking about, you know, religion, you know, or no, fundamentalism or anything like that, but um, having that ability to be able to, to look at your conscious level, to understand what would you give advice to people that were seeking, being the seeker that's seeking the spiritual side of things? Oh, wow. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> that's a really because I know you're, I know you're heavy into all that, Jerry. So, like me, because we've I, had these conversations before. Right. I, all I can say is that I, I went on a journey, like, um, and this is a little bit more recent, but let me just say it this way: if you look at Joseph Campbell, right, and you look at the heroes, what's he called? And you can look this up. It's called the Hero's Journey. It's a, it basically is a template that shows how everyone's life really works. You go through these different, you know, these different um, seasons of your life and the, where it, um, where it ends up usually goes back to a place you would call home. But here's the point is that it gives you a perspective. And I didn't find this until just a few years ago, but I here, let me say it this way. If you're a seeker, you go on a, to me, you would go on a, a station like YouTube and you just look up names. You know, you'd have a, you'd have to have a little list. And I think anyway, or you could do it intuitively, I guess. Uh, you'd have a list of names of potential people like, you know, Wayne Dyer's gone, but his, his, 
his recordings, oh, uh, which yes. I just watched the other day. One. Well, of he them. still they still put his podcasts out. Oh yeah. So so even on podcasting, you can listen to his teachings for free. Yeah, and so people like that whose message is timeless, and he always says something good because he didn't have you know some of his life is you know a little tainted as he talks about and. Uh, well, I think everyone's is. Yeah, that's just <laughs> that's it. life. It's human. It's human. It's human. It's the hero's journey. Right. It's the hero's journey. But I think when you go into the hero's journey of Joseph Campbell, you really find a lot because you can sit there and look at this this diagram that he puts up. Like the whole inspiration for Star Wars. Uh, uh, what's his name? Who's the pro- uh, George Lucas? George Lucas is it was extremely good friends with uh, with Campbell. And that's where he got all the inspiration was, uh, all the inspiration for Star Wars. Yes, exactly. hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. So, you know, you can create your own Star Wars journey, you know, you can make your life like that. You know, you, you know, you, you turn out, you, you start out as somebody who's like a underachiever and you turn that into a, like a Luke Skywalker type who becomes is he a hero to himself more than anybody right. else? You're not looking to impress anybody else, but you add and enrich your life by uh, adding quality information. And yeah, having an open mind and having an open mind. I think those are the things. You know, it was interesting. Like right now on my spiritual <clears throat> journey, um, so I was in the Marine Corps and did a lot in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. So you know, one of my things was I needed to confront that in the sense of looking at um, Islam as being an enemy, you know, in the United States. Right. Then I, then I listened to this amazing, uh, Sufi teacher on YouTube Mm -hmm. and he was just talking about love and talking about how you can have that intimate connection. He called God his beloved Mm -hmm. and he got into, you know, having this intimate connection where you have a father that is, loving and caring, not abusive. And, you know, because our view of how we look at God a lot of times is our view of how we look at men in our life, Mm -hmm. you know, and he began to talk and share about, you know, this loving, caring, you know, whether you believe in God or not, it doesn't matter. But the whole idea of this and it's, and Sufism is the mystic part of Islam. Mm -hmm. And so I have about seven, eight books now. I've been really reading about it just because I had such a, a, a prejudgment or a prejudice towards Islamism. Cause I looked at the fundamental side of, you know, cause we right. fought wars with that. You know, I was right. a part of that, you know? So I, I looked at it that and I didn't see this beautiful side, you know, and he talked about that with, he's like, all religions are like a walnut. And he goes, you need the hard outer shell to protect the seed that's inside. And he said, the seed that's inside, whether you're a Christian or you're a mystic Christian, esoteric, whatever it may be. He's like that, that, that. But he said, if you didn't have that hard shell, it wouldn't protect it and hold it down through the centuries to get these manuscripts out and stuff like that. And I thought that was a beautiful, yeah. um, that's a beautiful way. So I want to end this, Jerry, we could talk for hours. Um, I want people to be able to, um, one thing I want to bring back to health though, because we didn't say the specifics. So, um, and that you talked to me about is vitamin D. That's probably one of the most normal things. And we're finding out people with high levels of vitamin D are are not being affected by COVID very much. Right. The if other- they didn't have underlying conditions. So a minimum, a minimum of 5,000, right? I well, use. Again, I, I, it, it, this goes back to the blood test. But, you know, I take somewhere between 10, 10 and 20,000 units a day. I mix it up a little bit. I also use some ascorbate, ascorbate vitamin C. I've been, you know, using more and more of that lately, and that helps too. So those are the those are the combinations for the for the COVID. And you, and you should take them at different times. Uh, Do you take them at the same time? You can take them at the same time. Right. Okay. But the vitamin D three with the K two. Yes. Um, you're taking like ten to. 10 to 20. I know I, I, I listened to a guy the other day, a physician, he was talking about, you know, he was going on a plane trip. So like a few days before he was taking 20. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Just to, just to get to that level too. And that's something like you said, but if you got, if you take it and see you have low vitamin D and you start taking vitamin D, then you get your blood work again. You'll see where, where your level supposed to be at. Yeah. That's the beautiful part. Exactly. Okay, well, we're going to end the show. I'm really excited. Thanks, Jerry. I appreciate it. Thank, thank and you, um, we're going to have you on again soon. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry, brother. 
Look within, look within, look within, and live your life on the edge of two worlds. A reality where you find true understanding of who you are. The learning is done. Become the teacher and embodying the oneness of all. Walk the cliff's edge between the seen and the unseen realities. Become a higher density being. Please go to www.higherdensityliving.com.com.